Hey everybody, this is my red clawed crab tank, and I'm not really sure what's going on with the cloudy water. It's been cloudy like that for a while, everything's fine with my nitrogen cycle, uh, the water's not dirty necessarily, I'm not really sure what's going on with the cloudy water, but it doesn't seem to be bothering anybody other than me. So I'm going to get in there and do a water change tonight, we're going to look at the filters a little bit, uh, I do need to get in there and clean out the filters. I did a video recently where I tinkered around with the waterfall there. And if you watch that video, you will remember that a lot more water was coming off that waterfall. Uh, if you didn't watch that video, I'll go ahead and attach a card if you're interested in watching it. And the water was really flowing a lot more vigorously out of there. And it's all because of the filter getting clogged up in the hang on the back filter. So we're going to pull that apart, have a look at it. We're going to look at what I use to replace filters and how I do it. Uh, very very much more cheaply than buying the replacement filters and I think I might pull the lid off and we might go ahead and pull the filters out of this um, tetrafauna filter as well while I'm in there and we'll go ahead and do that so let me get started on that and then I will uh, see you on the inside of this tank in just a moment all right, everybody, we're shooting with the flash on, so we'll get a good look at what this filter looks like. This is a pretty typical filter. It's a Tetra Whisper 40, and it just has this little cartridge that slides in the back there. And as I suspected, it's pretty gunky, but that's not terrible. Well, that's pretty bad, but it's not terrible. I've seen it worse. So we're going to go over and have a look at how I deal with that in a minute. Uh, but next we're going to pull the top off and we're going to go ahead and pull the cartridges out of this one. Alright, this will give you a look inside. This is nothing more than a little pump in the bottom. And it pumps out through the center. And for the water to get into the center, it has to flow through these filters which are pretty gross so that one looks like it got a little hung up being pushed in and didn't actually filter properly so I'm gonna go get working on replacing them I'll show you how I do it and I'll show you how to save a lot of money All right, now if you're familiar with these filter cartridges, to buy the replacement cartridges, these come with a little sleeve and each package comes with a little bit of activated carbon. I don't bother with the carbon anyway, so that to me is a waste. And I think you get three or four little sleeves for about $10 or $12, something like that. It's been so long since I bought them, I can't even remember honestly. It's not cheap. Uh, you just slide the sleeve up, it goes all the way up to here, that folds over, and then that little clip clips on and holds everything in place. So what I do is I buy this polyfill batting. I don't buy the polyfill, which is just fluff. I have a bag of it around here somewhere. If I can see it, I'll show it to you. And I do not see it. Um, the batting is this stuff. When it says batting, it comes. It means it comes in sheets. So that's what you want to look for. At least that's what I like. You can use the other stuff, but the other stuff is just like loose cotton fluff, and there's not a lot you can do with it. This comes in sheets. This sheet, um, let's see, it is 90 by 108 inches. And if I cut sheets that are roughly this size... I did uh, 6 by 10 so that's 60 square inches, more than adequate to do one of these. I can get 163 or 164 filters out of one of these rolls and this cost me about $11. Now that would be if I made them all that size. I use this for wiping down my glass, I use it for cleaning equipment, uh, I cut smaller pieces for these. This is the end result, this is what you're going to have, you're just going to take your little piece that you've cut to the proper size lay it on there just fold it you know around on both sides fold the clips over and put your little clip on and you're done it's open at the bottom 
and it's just a little polyester uh, fiber filter and you can get 160 of them for roughly the same cost as you can buy three or four of the original equipment replacements so that's how I do my filters I'm gonna get back over and do the water change we'll go over and have a quick before and after and see how it looks with some nice new clean water in it and there's your after so the water's still a little cloudy again it's just been cloudy in this tank I'm not really sure what's going on with that not overly concerned about it at the moment but we'll keep our eye on it. You may also notice that the waterfall to the left does not seem significantly more uh, vigorous than the one on the right seems much, much more vigorous. And I will say that was not due to the filter itself being clogged when I put the new filter in. Um, I was still really, really low on water flow. It was barely trickling off the end of the rock and it was just not vigorous like I remembered it. So I wound up pulling the uh, intake tube out that has the little uh, magnetic impeller attached to it. And from time to time, if you don't pull that apart, just gunk gets inside of it and it just sort of clogs up the flow. And I even had some Java that it attached to the um, screen, if you want to call it that, the little grating or whatever, the little plastic intake tube had some Java fern stuck to it and the roots were actually starting to grow up inside the tube. And so that really restricted the water flow. And once I got all that cleaned out, in addition to the brand new filter, you can see how uh, vigorous I've got that waterfall flowing now. Much, much more voluminous and I get more you know babbling brook sound I get more trickling water sound I didn't like that at first but it's grown on me and it actually is now has kinda become a nice little peaceful relaxing sort of sound coming out of the room so this side I didn't do anything other than pull the filters out it does have a little pump inside and it's the same kind of pump you'd get for a little small uh, water feature that you would put on the you know your, your patio or something and it can only pump upwards 8 or 10 inches. It moves about 200 gallons an hour optimum. And right now, I think the intakes on that and the impeller area are just as clogged up. So same thing. I would just have to get it out, scrub it out in some water, rinse it back and forth vigorously, run some hot water through it maybe, and it'll knock all that gunk loose. And then I'll get back up to full volume of water flow again. And this waterfall will be much more vigorous as well. The last thing I want to cover is, I've mentioned this is a brackish tank. I've had people ask me before how I get the brackish water to the correct salinity since this tank is a slightly different salinity than my actual brackish tank. I do have a tank with a uh, figure eight puffer in it that is I call my brackish tank. Uh, this is not. This is brackish water, but I call this one my red clawed crab tank. So the water in this tank has a specific gravity or a salinity of 1.005 or thereabouts, very, very bottom end of what can be called brackish. It's the minimum uh, salinity that you can get into brackish. My brackish tank with my figure eight is 1.008, which is still considered very low end brackish, but it's getting up there a little more. It's more salty than this. There's more salinity than this. So instead of mixing up two different sets of brackish water or anything, what I do is I drain whatever I drain. Let's say I drain three gallons of water out of here. I only put maybe two or two and a half gallons of my brackish water back in that is set at 1.008. And then the last little inch or two of water that needs to be topped off, I use my RO water and top that off. And that actually dilutes the salinity of the water that's in the tank just enough that it puts me right around 1.005 or thereabouts. Uh, I've said many times by the nature of brackish animals, uh, if you want to call them brackish animals, they're actually called urihaline animals. And by nature of what makes them urihaline, they can bounce around in salinity. Rapid and extreme shifts in salinity don't bother them at all. So if I do a water change and I start at 1.005 and I come out the other end of it at 1.007, it's no big deal. It doesn't really matter, so I don't worry about it. I'm not that precise. Um, 
But if I were to do that every time and it were to gain just a little bit at every water change, before long I'd have salt water, you know, I'd have marine water. So from time to time I do check the salinity just to make sure I'm still in the ballpark. And rarely do I ever even bother with the refractometer. You just don't need that kind of precision when you're dealing with brackish water. So what I usually do is just dip a finger in it and put a drop on the tip of my tongue. And I can generally tell uh, whether or not I'm in the ballpark or whether or not it's close enough. If it's, you know, if I get no salt at all, if it's not even the taste threshold, uh, you know, then I know I'm not even close and I need to do a little more uh, looking into why I have such, you know, low salinity. And then likewise, if I taste it and it's really salty, well, then I know I need to dilute it a little bit because it really shouldn't be. It should be just enough that I can tell it's salty water. I've done this long enough that I literally can just dip a finger in it and put a drop on my tongue and I can get it close enough that it's fine for a water change in a brackish tank. So there you go. That was just a little look. I wish the crabs had come out a little more. They never seem to when I've got the camera out. Anyway, make sure you're subscribed. You never know what you're going to get with me. I wasn't really planning on doing any video at all tonight and then I wound up doing all of this. So surprise to me, surprise to you. And if you're subscribed, you won't miss anything like that. So thanks again for watching. Don't forget this is my Red Claw Crab Tank. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you real soon in the next one.